Cannibals are generally considered as a bad thing. Well, not according to NVIDIA. Hello and welcome to This Week in the Tech News. In the last couple of weeks, rumors have been flying around about NVIDIA potentially releasing a GTX 1070 Ti. Now, the thinking around these rumors have been that RX Vega 56 has found a gap in the market and now NVIDIA is trying to plug it. Now, these rumors seemed really unlikely until fairly recently when a release date for the graphics card was, was leaked by a Nordic hardware website. Uh, they said that it's going to be released in late October. Now, I'm actually fairly skeptical about these, um, about the GTX 1070 Ti, purely because of the specs that are quoted for it, because the, the 1070 has about 1,900 CUDA cores in it, but this 1070 Ti is going to have 20, is going to have 2,432 CUDA cores, which is basically the same amount as the GTX 1080, which has 2560, so 2560 CUDA cores. It just seems very unlikely that NVIDIA is going to ca completely cannibalize its 1080 sales with this graphics card, because that's what it's going to do. The only difference, essentially, between the two graphics cards at this point seems to be that the 1070 Ti has just normal GDDR5 uh, instead of GDDR5X. So the performance is going to be pretty much identical. Why would NVIDIA do that? And at the same time, not the same story, but on a similar note, Forza 7 is about to be released on PC, which everybody's quite excited about. Well, they're quite excited about the game, they're not excited about the 100 gig download that it's going to be. But RX Vega 64 actually comfortably outperforms a GTX 1080 Ti in Forza 7, apparently which is really weird because Vega 64 doesn't really outperform anything normally. So now it's outperforming a 1080 Ti um, at 4K, that just is a bit weird. Um, so it seems that the game is quite biased towards AMD. Or maybe it's the only game that will ever be optimized for Vega. But that's quite exciting for Vega owners. AMD has stated that they're officially starting their NVMe RAID support on X399, which is a great idea. The fact that you can now have three 960 Pro SSDs in, in RAID 0 is a terrifying concept because it's going to be faster than light itself. Uh, it's, not quite sh it's not quite clear when this support is going to be released yet, but it seems that it's going to come out in the next week or so. Uh, it's going to be a free update for any Threadripper owners. It's a really good idea because Threadripper has 64 PCI Express lanes, which is a huge amount, and without something like RAID support for NVMe drives, you don't really have much to do with it. Yes, you can have like 10 gigabit networking and four graphics cards with like a fistful of SSD drives, but now you can use that bandwidth even more efficiently. And now, finally, two quick stories to round off the week. Reportedly, Intel's new Coffee Lake series is going to be really difficult to find after its initial release, which is coming up on the 5th of October. Apparently, A Intel doesn't actually have enough of the CPUs available to sell them on large scale. So essentially what they're going to do is they're going to send them out to reviewers and send out a couple thousand CPUs to, to retailers, and after that you're pretty much not going to be able to find them. Apparently this is going to start getting better in around December, but they're going to be gearing up for a full launch in quarter one of next year. So I think they basically just want a performance jump on AMD so that they can say we have a much faster multi-threaded CPU in this series, uh, even though you can't find it anywhere. I think this is a bit of a bad thing for them to do, because People were buying, were, were still buying the 7700K like hotcakes, and now they're just going to completely cannibalize those sales. So this this kind of behavior really shows that Intel seems to be quite desperate at the moment. Um, and after that, Samsung is reportedly making more money off the iPhone X than they are making off the Galaxy S8, which is really great. Um, apparently the screens, they're making such a big profit on the, on the screens that they're selling Apple that they're actually out, out, outpacing their own profit margin on their own smartphone. 
Um, I think this might be one of the reasons that, that Apple didn't actually have an OLED display in earlier phones was because they knew that Samsung would just take them for a complete ride. Um, so I think Samsung must be sitting there with quite a big smile on their face, um, knowing that they're, that they're having at Apple in this way. Anyway, that's all for this week. Thank you very much for watching. If you like the video, do like and subscribe to the channel. Until next week, this was This Week in the Tech News.